did he say for me to go? Okay. I was, oh, I was on, my thing yeah, was muted. muted. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and go again. Go All right. Ahead. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, no, maybe. It'll take one more second. Okay, that looks lovely. Can we have the other person go? Yep. Go ahead. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. One more time, please. What? Did he? Go one more time, please. Do, do it again. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, no, I think we're ready. I'm ready anyway, so I'm gonna bring everybody together. Okay, that sounds great. Thanks. Let's put you there. Okay, if you guys want to congregate in the middle. Does everybody have a little hand whip? Okay. Nope. I have extras. Oh, um, what happened to my clipboard? Yeah, can I get that real quick? Yes. Uh, sure, you can, yeah. If, you, if you're wanting to use treats, then go for it. Now is your time to go ahead and grab some. Thank you. I just have my agenda on there, so I kind of keep track of what I'm doing, too. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Pick your poison. Oops, come on. Can I get That's a okay. yep. hand rip? This one's a little bit, you know, if you want, I'll just, I'll use this okay. one because it's a little bit long. Thank you. They're kind of more difficult to handle sometimes when they're so long. Oh, okay, cool. Then uh, while you guys are practicing, I might go set a few other little things up. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to go through and get everybody's names again for our viewers. So go ahead and just tell me your name and the name of your horse. Uh, Christine, and this is Raz. So we have Christine and Raz. My name is Ellie, and this is Mickey. Ellie and Mickey. Jane and Butte. Taylor and I always get it named Det. Okay. <laughs> So what we're going to be working on today, this is kind of the body control segment. And we've got some cool little things set up, and that's going to be towards the end, after we've gone through it, like, kind of as a dry run, so to speak. Because um, what we want to do is have control of every single piece of our horse's body on the ground. You should be able to put each and every foot anywhere you want. And that's going to translate into the saddle. The amount of body control that you have on the ground is going to directly influence how much control you have in the saddle, okay? And, and for some horses, vice versa, some horses that haven't had a lot of ground training that have only really been ridden, sometimes the more control they have ridden, then they get a little bit better on the ground, but we like to start on the ground. Um, and the purpose, like I went through last week, the purpose of this course is to make your horse really easy, safe, and enjoyable to handle for anyone and everyone, okay? And so, our little props here, you know, they don't really matter that much. 
other than just for, you know, you can practice, you can do it or not. But the key is that these are skills that when you go out to, like maybe you're leading your horse on a walk or you're going out on trail ride and you need to get off, or again, you as you get better at these things, they transfer into the saddle. These are all things that are working on building the skill. Does that make sense? So that you have that control, that if you get in a situation, you can take care of your horse, okay? And you can maneuver them in tight spaces because sometimes like if you go out to a clinic or you go to a show or and even if you trailer out on trail ride or something like that, you may sometimes find yourself in some really tight spaces. And a lot of horses are very, very claustrophobic. And that just goes along with flight animals tend to be very claustrophobic because if, if I'm boxed in, where can I run? And so with these, you know, a lot of times with these poles and stuff, it's like, you know, well, hold on, I can't go past this barrier. I'm feeling claustrophobic. I'm feeling boxed in. And so by working through those things, you're also building your horse's confidence, okay? And there's confidence in themselves and confidence in you that if they listen to you, you're going to keep them safe, okay? So we have some different parts of the horse's body. I hope that you all worked on your softening to the halter. Um, before we get started real quick, did anybody have anything they wanted to share about like any practice that you did last week as far as like anything that went really well or really badly? Everything has gone really well except um, uh, dropping the front down. Okay. And yeah, yeah. So were you able to make some progress with him with dropping his head down? A little bit. Okay, <laughs> good. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't, I wouldn't guarantee any demonstration that he would do it right now. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Um, anything else? Okay, we'll go ahead and get started then. So if your horse can tip their nose around on the halter, your next step is going to be disengage the hindquarters, okay? And what that means is that the inside Inside is always the direction the horse is bent towards, okay? It doesn't matter where the rail is or where you're at in the arena. Inside is the direction that the horse is bent. Make sense? Any questions on that? Because that's really important. When I'm calling out inside or outside and everyone's like, bah, what does that mean? Inside is the way your horse is bent. So if I tip her nose around this way, she's bent left. So your inside left front leg is going to stay totally still. It's going to pivot in place. Okay? The inside hind leg is going to cross over. Not stepping side to side. That's cheating. Not crossing behind. Usually they don't do that on the hind as much as they do on the front when we get into some of the other move maneuvers. But it has to cross over. Okay? And there's a lot of physical reasons for that. Um, if you horse cannot cross over, don't get on its back because it's so tight in its hips that it's not going to be able to carry your weight anyway. Um, but a lot of times it's just as a training thing that no one's really actually taught them to do that on cue. Okay? Um, but it helps loosen your horse up. It also is your preparation when you're riding for an emergency stop. Okay? Because when your horse is in a disengaged position, and just think of that word disengage for a minute. Uh, you know, your hind end is your horse, that's your horse's motor. Okay? And so engagement, if you're talking about collection or anything like that, engagement is powering up that motor. To disengage is to turn it off. Turn the key off, take the key out of the ignition. So when your horse is in a disengaged position, they can go in a circle like that all day long, but they're not going to be able to rear or buck or do anything really dangerous. Okay? So it transfers into your emergency stop when you're riding. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, it's up to you. Um, if you want to touch your horse on the side where your leg would be, or if you want to touch your horse on the hip, that's 100% personal preference, okay? Um, or you can just kind of tap with your whip a little bit. Again, that's totally up to you. But what you're going to want to do is tip your horse's head around and put a little bit of pressure and see how she crosses over, over. That one was under. Over, over, good girl. Did you see the difference from when the one time that she kind of crossed behind and then all the other times that she crossed over? Did you guys see it? So then we'll go to the other side. Over, over, good. Good girl. 
Um, and did you also notice, like, you can see there's kind of, she's almost digging a hole into the ground because the ground's kind of wet. That's what you're looking for. Um, some of you are going to have problems where your horse is going to basically just be moving in a big circle around you or a small circle around you. Um, and the way to correct that is actually going to be, it's going to take some timing. Um, so I can always step in if you're really having trouble. I can kind of step in and work with your horse for a few minutes to kind of give you an idea. But basically what you're going to do is watch that inside front foot that's supposed to be pivoting. Every time that that foot leaves the ground, bump the halter. Just a bump up. Okay? Don't get caught too much into any sort of drama. Just time it. As soon as that foot leaves the ground, bump. Leaves the ground again, bump. Leaves the ground again, bump. And then figure it out really, really fast. Horses are very smart. People underestimate their intelligence all the time. They'll figure out pretty quickly that if you have good timing, that when any of the other feet leave the ground, nothing happens. But when that foot leaves the ground, you bump the halter. And then they'll stop moving that foot, and you stop bumping the halter. So timing is important. Um, so like I said, if you need help with that, definitely make sure that I come help you because you don't want to be doing your timing wrong. Yes? So you've got the lead rope. You've already got your horse's head tipped around. And it actually is even easier. Remember how last time when we were tipping the, the halter we had it on the square? That's even easier. Um, so you've got it on the square and you tip your horse's head around. And you're asking for that hind end to move. And if this front foot goes, I'm just going to bump, bump, bump. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Just a little jerk up. Um, so I would start by asking your horses to soften to the halter either side a couple of times first. Okay? Because if you don't have the softness to the halter, then forget about the feet. Okay? So get your horse soft first. Then ask your horse for just like one or two steps. And if they can give you one step or two steps where that front foot stays and the hind end moves. They don't have to do a full 360, okay? Start with one or two, praise them, oh, good boy, whatever, give them a treat, whatever you decide to do to, for your positive reinforcement. And then you ask again. Stay on one side for a little while, and then switch to the other side after they're doing pretty decently, then switch to the other side and practice on that side for a while, okay? So I'll tie her up, so then that way I can kind of come around and help you guys a little bit. And you might want to give yourself some room. I know we've got some obstacles set up in here, um, but you don't want to necessarily worry about bumping into things. Come here, Mickey. We're just going to go right here. That's a good boy. No. Okay, so do you see when his front foot leaves the ground? Then you give him a little jerk on his halter. And I'm actually going to switch out you over here first a little bit. No, I'm sorry, you can't bite. Hey, I'm Mickey. not going to give you anything. Mickey. So see how I kind of keep pressing into him until he stops? Yeah. Okay, so try again. And, w and your first priority is going to be that this front foot stays. Okay. okay? So you just watch that front foot. And if it's as soon as it leaves the ground, just give him a good bump. Try Get his way. focus. You can pull his head around a little bit more because right now he's still thinking about me. Right there. Jerk. Okay. Get his head around. Jerk. Good boy. Good boy. What you may want to do, do you mind if I tang him for just a second? Only because I think if you see what I'm um, doing on him, I think it'll help you a little bit. So go ahead, stand right there so that you can have a good view. Ooh. Ooh. So I'm going to bring his head all the way around. If he tries to nibble at me, I still have the right to give him a pop on the nose because he should be able to have his head around here without nibbling on me. And I'm going to ask with the whip a little bit because he's not really responding to your hand pressure. Bump. Bump. Okay, let's try this again. Bump. There. Bump. There, bump, bump. 
Good. Kind of threw that last step in at the end. But see how he just stayed right there with him and made him keep moving until he figured it out? Okay, let's try again. That's good boy. You so I ask boy. his head around. I use the whip. Oh, good boy. Little bump there. Good, good bump. Bump. There. Okay, yes, the good boy. Good. So in, until he can give me at least a good like step or two on the hind without that front wanting to move, I just stay right there with him and make him stay moving. A little better on this side. Bump. Hey. Bump. No. Good. A little backup step at the end, but he's getting the idea. And that goes back into the him wanting to bring his mouth over to you. It can be difficult with these guys, these young geldings like this, that, you know, they want to be mouthing you at the same time. And it's like, okay, bring your head to me. No, don't. <laughs> There you go. Good. Good. There you go. Good boy. Good job. Okay, now you try. What we may even want to do, because this rope is a little bit long for this work. For some other stuff we're going to do, it's good. But for this, it's kind of, you may want to do that. And then I'd slide down and come like here. Keep your whole hand on it. You're going to need that strength. <laughs> Bump. Hard. He's, remember, we talked about that last week. He's a lot bigger than you. Oh, there you go. Bump. Bump. And then as soon as he gives you like two steps without moving that front end, keep it moving, keep going, keep going. Not yet. But you want to be quick with your release. There you go, now relax. Now tell him he's good. And he keeps wanting to throw in that backward step like when you've released and you're like, oh good, and then he wants to step backwards. And like I said, that's part of that, oh now I'm going to come nibble you, you know what I mean? And so you just hold your space. Tell him he's good, but hold your space. Um, does that make sense though? And you can, you know, there, there's horses that are really, really sensitive. And then there's horses that are a little bit more dull. And he's on the dull side. So you you can give him a little bit of a of a bump. You know, a You're fairy a touch is going to work with some horses. You know, you get You're some really boy. sensitive Arabs or whatever that are going to, you know, if you look at him wrong, they freak out. And so then we don't want to do that. But with him, you know, a little bumping, he's like, he doesn't even feel you. You know, he's like, oh, fly, <laughs> you know. So you can use as much as you need to use to get the point across. Because with him being so young, it's going to be way too easy for him to develop bad habits that are going to become dangerous to you. So it's really important that you get it through to him right from the beginning that he needs to really pay attention to you and not be such a bully, you know. So come out of the secret corner. <laughs> How is he doing? Okay. Did you um, practice doing the softening at all this week? Bend your head. Nope. I'm fine. He's one of the more, s he's sensitive, but then he can also kind of. Okay, yeah. You're a good boy. Hi. Aw, good boy. Good. So if he gives you a step over without moving behind, tell him he's good. Good job. And I bumped him, but it was, it's, again, it's that little as possible, but as much as necessary. Good. 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 Because the amount that you're going to bump him is going to be totally different from the amount that you're going to bump that guy, <laughs> you know. So you just have to really, like, as, uh, again, it's that as little as possible, but as much as necessary. So as little as you can do to get the job done is exactly what you want to be doing. Um, but you're willing to do as much as necessary to get the job done. 
Good. And if he's kind of tight in his neck, then we don't, you know, we'll keep doing the softening, but we don't have to be super, super strict about having his head around to his shoulder. Does that make sense? So you'll know what his, yeah, you'll know what his limitations are if he is really tight, and you'll just say, well, can you tip your head a little bit for me? Good boy. And so I'll stay with him until he can cross over now. Good. Because first and foremost, I focus on the front. Is that front end pivoting? Then I go, okay, now are you crossing over in the hind? Okay. So now that I've got the front pivoting most of the time, good. Good boy. Uh, he can pick it up and down in the same spot. Okay, Nikki. But he can't step it somewhere else. He can't move it. And the thing is that you're not doing, you know, circles round and round and round and round, and it doesn't even have to be fast. You know, it can be slow, and you're going to do a 180 maybe, or a, or a 360 at most, you know. But you do need to have that control that you can make that front end stay. Because when you get into one of these situations, and you go, oh, can you move your hind, and he moves the front at the same time, you're out of the box, you know. <laughs> Lauren, yes. can you help me a bit? Thank you. You're next on the list anyway. <laughs> okay, how's it going? Um, pretty good. I got him to do some uh, to the left. Okay. But um, he, with going to the left particularly, or er, going the right. to the right particularly, he moves his f uh, pivot foot. A okay. Lot. Can I see him? Mm-hmm. So what I'll do that'll probably help is move this up to this square piece here. Okay. It does, it's one of those just really little things that can make a really big difference for you. Oh, good boy. You're really soft, huh? So every time if that front foot moves, I'm going to give it a bump. And it's going to be as much of a bump to get the point across to him, but not so much to upset him. Oh, good boy. Good. So then he kept it still, and then he actually even crossed over in the hind for two good steps. So then I release to him and tell him he's great. And then you just go right back to it and ask again. Bring your head around. There you go, a little bit better. There you go. That was better. And part of it is that he's kind of wanting to come backwards towards you a little bit because when you're mm -hmm. moving the halter, good. He's thinking that it means to go backwards instead of to go sideways. There, good, good. Good. There you go. Okay, do you want to try? Sure. And he definitely does a lot better the more that his head is tipped around. Okay. When he starts okay. to straighten up is kind of when he starts to get into that more backwards. There. So every time that foot leaves the ground, give a good bump. There you go. Now, oh, yep. spoke too soon. So if he good gives boy. you about two steps without moving the, that front foot, then you stop and tell him he's good. Okay. Go ahead and good try boy. again. Because <laughs> the timing of your release is actually more important than anything else. Because the release is what's going to tell him, oh, there, you got it. So okay. when you stop, then whatever he did right before you stopped is, go is what's going to imprint into his brain. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and try again. Bump. Bump. There. Now release. And tell him he's good. Good boy, Mickey. And good so, boy. but then you said he was really good to the left? Or uh, do you want me to watch you on this better side? better to the left. But if you'd watch me on the left side, that'd be good. Yep.
good. And then you release yeah. and tell him he's good. You got about th three good steps point. there with that pivot foot. Well done. Yeah, he is a little better to the left, which is totally like every horse has a, a good side and a bad side. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your main work when you're riding and working on the ground is to start try to even them out. But they're just like people. They're left-handed or right-handed. And so they're always going to be bend better to one side or the other, you know. So okay. what you would want to do to even him out is say, okay, you're better to the left. That's great. I'm going to do it twice as many times to the right as I am to the left. Okay. To the left, I might need to just check in a little bit. Hey, can you do this? Yep. Great. Good. And okay. then you'll go to the right and work on it for five minutes. You know what I mean? So you mm -hmm. try to balance him out where he can do it really good on both sides. But okay. good work. So I would just work on with him on that right a little bit more. Okay. You're a good boy, Nikki. Good boy. Try this again. How's it going? Yeah, good boy. That's You're okay. a really good boy. But on the other side, he actually did plant his foot. And good. He kind of went almost three and a half and three quarters away. Good, good. So he did that a couple times. But now he probably is just going to hang out. And he got lots of praise and he relaxed his lips and cheeks good. and all that good stuff. But he probably won't be around. So, but was he as good on the right or not so much? Not so much, not so much, but then I haven't practiced with him so much on this side either. Yeah. So, um, okay, well, go ahead and show me your good side, and then we'll work on the bad side. That's okay. Just keep him moving until he gets it right. So I wouldn't really worry about pulling him back forward. I would just continue because basically, so you're here and you're trying to ask for something. And he thinks maybe she wants me to back up. He doesn't backing up to be obstinate. He's backing up because he thinks maybe that's what you want. Yes, I'm sure. So then if you change gears and go, wait, come forward, then he's gonna he's just gonna get confused. Does that make sense? So even if he's backing up, unless he's gonna back into something dangerous, I would just stay right there with him until he takes that step over. And then you release. And he'll figure out very quickly, okay, backing up's not what she wants. She wants me to step over, that's when I get the release. Does that make sense? Because like I was just explaining to her over there, the release is what trains. So when you time your release to, you know, whatever that horse did right before, that's what they're gonna know you wanna do. Good. Yeah, so then you just release and tell him he's good. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you can do it. Okay, now go ahead and try to the other side. Stay with him. There you go. Release. So you got two steps where he kept his front pivot foot and he crossed over in the hind. So that was great. And all you're asking for right now is one or two steps. You know, eventually he'll get, you know, 180 or 360 or whatever. But right now it's like two steps and you're good as long as they're correct. Um, and these exercises, actually, a lot of people don't realize that having to cross over like that really loosens up those groin muscles. Uh -huh. And so a lot of horses can just simply be tight there where they just can't go a full half circle around. And so the more you do that and then the more your horse can do that, you really kind of can help loosen them up and stretch it out. So keep working on it, especially on that right side. But you're on the right track. You're doing good. <laughs> okay. Did you, does anybody still having trouble with this? Okay. Still is right side. Okay, go for it. Come on, come on. Bump. Bump. Okay. There, release. Ah, good. Good. So it just as I think, um, you developing your spatial awareness. Does that make sense? Yeah. Kind of being able to watch and see, okay, is the hind moving? Is the front? And it's a lot. 
you know, to get used to watching everything. Um, so I think it's just going to be a lot of you practicing being able to see everything. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. So, but yeah, that last one was really good. One step is fine. He doesn't have to go around a whole bunch. If he gives you one step where that front end stays as the pivot foot and the hind cross is over, that's great. Okay. Keep that, and then over time you build on it where he can do a full 180 or 360. But in the beginning, one step, or if he gives you two, is great. Okay. So praise him for that, and then you just ask again and do it over and over again. <laughs> okay. Still not good? You're a good boy. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, good. Like good boy. So what yeah, I would do. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so what I would do, and actually she was having the same problem with um, Raz, um, is if he starts backing up, unless he's going to back himself into something dangerous, don't stop what you're doing to bring him forward. Oh, okay. Because the release is, and I've just been going through this with everybody, the release is what actually trains the horse. So the moment, whatever you're doing, the moment you stop and switch gears to anything else, the horse goes, okay, that must be what she means by that. So if you come up here and he starts backing up and you go, oh no, come forward. He's going to go, okay, when she comes towards me, she must want me to back up. So you're training him to do that. You know, so what you, yeah, yeah, which is fine, but you should still be able to go to his withers or to his hip or to his shoulder without him automatically thinking backing up. And a lot of times, you know, like you were just, if you were just working on that, a lot of times when horses first learn something, they're like, that's what they want. And then they do it for everything. And so we're not going to hold it against him. We're just going to go, no, that's not what I'm asking for. And so sometimes if you kind of approach it like a, you know, if you're over here, you don't need to walk off. And then you're like, okay, let me scratch your withers. And you kind of approach him more in that way. You know what I mean? Where he's not wanting to back up so much. Then bring his head around, okay, come on. get you from the side here, and I'm going to wait until he can relax his head. There you go. Good boy. Well, it, it just, it, it's nothing about, um, it just is the rapport. You've worked on different stuff with him than I have. Does that make sense? Good. There you go. And your body language and your body position is going to be different for each horse. So, like, you see how I'm kind of open with him here? Yeah. Because I need to be paying more attention on him to his front end. Yeah, he I could swing his hind around that, all day long. I even got down and rolled. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that almost worked. Because then it kind of broke his hand a little bit. But every time I ask him, Good. I mean, Good. It, it's wonderful to watch you do it, but it doesn't happen. <laughs> so, now you try it. I'll even get this out of your way. Okay. That was it. Good boy. Who is a good boy? You're a good boy. Good. And then ask again. So then give him a little bump. If you're not asking him to move, then he doesn't need to move. Because just as much as we want to have control of where he steps, we also want to have control of that he doesn't step if you don't want him to. So he's making assumptions. So what I would do is just stay right there scratching his withers. He can move circles around this whole arena, and we don't care. You're scratching his withers, and you're going to continue to bump him whenever he moves until he can stand still for you to scratch his withers. So he tends to get into um, making assumptions. And so then you just turn the tables on him and go, oh, no, I'm glad you're thinking, but that's not actually what I want. And there are situations where you can actually use that to your advantage with certain horses. So just stay right there scratching his withers. And I would actually even step towards his hind a little bit more. Step towards what? His hind a little bit more, take a couple steps to the side, but stay right there. Stay with him. Yep, so just stay right with him.
And then, because he also needs to kind of learn to chill out that you're not always necessarily asking him for something. Some people, and this may be the case with him, especially because he's new here, and I'm not really sure how much history they know about his training. Some people do teach their horses, like, when I'm stepping towards your hind, you had better move out of the way. Um, I don't like that way of training for this exact reason. Because what if I'm just trying to brush him or something? You know what I mean? Yeah. Or I'm trying to, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't want him to just step step away because I'm walking towards him. So again, what you do with that is when he steps away, don't back off. Stay right there with him because he has to learn, like, no, nah, that's not really what I wanted. When I want you to step away, I'll put a little bit of pressure with my hand. So then when you're ready and you feel like he's relaxed and standing still, then you just put a little bit of pressure on his hind and have him move like one step over and then release to him. But don't make a big deal about it. And then just go right back to scratching his withers and expect him to stand still. There. And then reward him, tell him he's great, and go right back to scratch scratching his withers and expect him to stand still. Yep, scratch it. Stay with him. Stay with him. So if you're at his standing at his shoulder, you stand right at that shoulder. And you can tell him, whoa, or you can bump the halter or whatever you decide to do that is effective for him. But he needs to figure out that just because you're standing there by his shoulder scratching him doesn't actually mean anything. There you go. So he's the kind of horse that's going to take, he could learn things very, very fast. But because he tries almost too hard and kind of jumps ahead and gets stressed out about learning, he actually has to learn slower, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, so then same thing on this side. Just scr go scratch his withers, stand by his shoulders. You're not actually asking for anything. You can bump on the halter or tell him to woe. Good boy. Because in the same way, like some people just like as soon as they tip their horse's nose around, they want the hind end to swing out. And for the same reason, I don't like that either, because there, you should be able to tip your horse's nose around and they should be able to stand still for it and not swing their hind out. And it just goes back to that same making assumptions. So you just stay right there with them. Yep, good job. So if you kind of slow things way, way down with him, <laughs> and again, the biggest thing is going to be staying with him. If he's backing up or going in circles, don't back off. Because the moment you step backwards, that's, that's releasing it from him, and he's going, oh, okay, that's what I'm supposed to do. So do you want this, or do you want me to set it over here? Yeah. How are you doing? He gets what? Huh. Oh, well. <laughs> this is part of him learning to be a little bit more mature. Yep, just keep asking until that hind moves. You may want to, if you don't mind me stepping in real quick, you may actually be a little bit more effective like this. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So jerk, see how he's coming into you? You can, because this is going to actually transfer into some other things. If he steps over and if he pushes you, that's a deadly sin. So you, no. That's one of the few times when you're when a horse is really being pushy on you that you can say, okay, forget what I'm doing. We got to address this first. So if he steps, you know, around me, I'll bump the halter and say, no, you're misunderstanding. If he steps on top of me, er, nope, you're in trouble. I'm going to smack him on the shoulder. Like I said, he's too young and too big to think that that's okay. See, so right here, how he's stepping into me, stepping into me, stepping into me, until he steps away. There. Good boy. You've got to develop this rapport with him, otherwise he's going to trample you one day. <laughs> um, so that has to come first. And I don't stop until he steps away from me. Forward and backwards doesn't count. He has to step away. Because he is a little bit pushy. But that com again, that comes with being young. Right there, he's leaning on me again. So I keep on him. There. And then when he steps away, I go, okay, thank you. You can't step on me. So this is a rule that you're going to have to get into him really quick. Good. 
And now he's kind of gotten away with it a little bit, so now he thinks that he can do it, you know? Unlearning is always much... Oh, good boy! Good! So even though he did have a little step with the front, I'm going to praise him for making progress because at least that little step was kind of in place and he wasn't stepping into me. Okay, and did you notice how I used the whip? When you have a horse that has a nervous system like him that's a lot more dull, the butt, a, a blunt pressure is going to do a lot more for him than the twitch part of it. Does that make sense? So you go ahead and ask him on this side now. And then when you have your whip in your hand like this, you can use it for the hind and you can use it for the front. Okay. Does that make sense? It's dual purpose. Keep your fist closed around it, though. So right there, see him step into you? Smack him. Get after him. Good. So ask his hind again. See him step into you, so what are you going to do? Until he moves off. There! Good girl! So you got to find your strength to hold your ground. Because it's really easy when he comes up to you and you just oops, go off of your balance and step out of the way. And you need to be strong. You need to go. If he comes into you, you just push, push him right back off. Okay? So go ahead and ask him again. What are you going to do? Send him off. Send him off. Good. And then release. Now walk him over here so he's not up against that other horse. Good job, though. You stayed with him until he crossed the, you know, he stepped off. Um, you're not going to do this too much, and trust me, this guy's personality, you won't hurt his feelings. <laughs> Go ahead again. Same thing. Right there. What are you going to do? Keep on him. Keep on him. You can even wave your hands up in the air and whatever. Keep on him. Jerk the rope. Don't let him walk off. Okay, so bring him back. So see how he's just kind of, that was kind of like a, oh, whatever, I'm going to ignore you and walk off. So you can still use the lead rope to keep him in a tight circle until he steps sideways away. He can't just walk off. That doesn't count because that was kind of more of like a, meh, I don't care. Now he actually has to have boundaries and he's like, wait a minute, this isn't fun anymore. But I'm telling you, for your safety, you have got to get this down with him. And we're just going to keep asking until he can give you one to see him step into you. So you can even go here. So it doesn't even always have to be pressure. You can wave your arms and make noise and make him step off that way. Whatever is effective. Good. And then bring him back over here. Why, why don't you bring him over here? We've got a little bit more room. And then when you're ready, ask again. Because there's no reason why he shouldn't be able to move his hind without stepping into you. Oh, keep hold of your lead rope. And you can tip his head pretty far over, you know. Okay, so go ahead and stop for a second. Another thing that might help you is tipping his head a little bit more. Okay. So, like, actually, and I know it's going to be kind of scary since he wants to nibble on you. But if he nibbles on you, elbow right okay. there. Boop. So tip his head around here first, head coming around, stay with him, stay right there, stay right there. I'll keep asking his head, and then ask the hind. Now ask the hind. Feel that front, what's the front doing? Front's coming at you, so send it off. Send him off. And your, your strength's not going to compare to his. So I would use a little bit more of a ch 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 Because if you push into him with all your weight, he doesn't care. You know what I mean? You know, you weigh about a tenth of what he weighs. So I would just use a little bit more noise and big. And you can still, still definitely pop him if you need to. But I wouldn't just put all my weight into him because that's not really going to be very effective. One good one, dude. And then we can move on. 
There you go. Then he stepped off. Now ask the hind again. Right away. Just go right into asking for the hind. Oh! Move, now move the front. Okay. Let me see him for just a second. Come over here, dude. It's interesting. All of the horses here... You know, some people struggle with a little bit of the same problems, but all the horses here have such different personalities. So I'm going to get his head tipped around first. Right there. Mm -mm. Thank you. Thank you. Because just because his head tips around, that doesn't mean he gets to step on me. That doesn't even make any sense. Good boy. And then I'll ask for the hind. Good. So with him, your biggest concern is going to be if he can move his hind without stepping on you with the front, you're going to release to him. Even if the rest of it's not perfect, even if he doesn't cross over, even if he doesn't have a pivot foot, you got to get an inch first. Okay? So if he can move the hind without moving the front, stepping on you at least. So why don't you, I'm going to help you, come right here. Go ahead and grab onto his halter even. So tip his head around. Come back with him. Stay right here. Tip his head around even more. There you go. And then ask the hind. Right there. What are you going to do? Get it on right here. There you go. Now immediately tip his nose around and ask again. Don't even give him a second to think about it. Stay with him. Stay with him. Now where's his head and where's his front end? It's coming to you. There. Now release. Release. Good. Good boy. Did that make sense? Yeah. Kind of. I know it's hard. Yeah. Go ahead. And, yeah. Go ahead and try again just to see if you can get it by yourself now. But be really strict with him on this. Do not let him step on you. Good. That was better. Go ahead and release. Even though he moved the front, it was away from you, not towards you. So on him, we're going to say, okay, that's fine. Now, within about, if you're, I don't know how much time you spend with your horse, but if you're working with him consistently, after about two sessions, he, he needs to understand that he needs to keep the front just still, period. Yeah. But to start with, you can go, okay, fine. I don't care if you move the front, you just can't step on me. Good boy. Okay, you guys ready to move on? Maybe. <laughs> so next is going to be a turn on the haunches. I can even email you guys a cheat sheet that has all this terminology and stuff. And so with what you just did, the front pivoted and the hind moved, yes? At least that's what it was supposed to look like. Um, with the turn on the haunches, it's the exact opposite. The front moves and the hind pivots, okay? Now, here's where things can get confusing. Who remembers what my definition of what the inside is in the beginning? Towards the bend. Your horse is going to be bent away from you. So the bend is not the side that you're on. This is where it can get confusing for a lot of people. Okay? That's why it's a good thing that we have videos that you can get on and review it. So, her inside hind leg, which is not this one over here where I'm standing, it's that one. That's the inside hind leg. Needs to be the pivot foot. Again, if it steps up and down right in place, that's okay. But it can't just move wherever, you know. I'm going to tip her nose away from me a little bit. And I'm going to ask her to move her front over. And it depends on what you want to do with your horse, what your cue is going to be. Some horses you might grab the halter. Some horses you may push the shoulder. I just use my hand up by her eye as my cue. That's your decision, what you want to do with your horse, okay? To start with, what you'll probably do is hold the halter and push the shoulder. You'll probably start right there, okay? So you can push your head away from you, and then you put a little pressure on the shoulder to move it. Now notice, I'll come around, my whip is in the hand that's on the shoulder, okay? Here's why. If her hind decides to swing out, I'm right here and can go, oh, no, it's not. Okay, and I can tap her on the hind. Does that make sense? Don't put it in this hand when you start. Put it in whatever hand is at the, her shoulder. But you're only going to use it if her hind swings out. So if her hind comes over here when I actually am asking this front end to move, then I can tap her here and go, no, no, that's not what I want. There's a barrier here. 
Okay. Does that make sense? Um, any questions on that? I know it's kind of confusing because it's like the exact opposite of what we just did. Also make sure you do it on both sides. You know, most horses are just used to being handled on their left, but you need to make sure that you do this evenly to both sides. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and practice it and I'll come around and check on you. Same thing. One or two steps is fine. Does not have to be a full circle when you start out. Okay, I'll go in reverse order this time, so it's kind of fair to everybody. <laughs> Good. What, what are, what are you doing up here? I'm okay. trying to get her to get him so to you're, go that way. Correct. So you're probably, when you start, you're probably going to want to have your hand on his halter and just, just push him away, just like that with your arm. You can even probably flip the lead rope up over his neck so it's out of your way. you go now stop and tell him he's good so he's moving away from pressure pretty well you're having to use a little bit of, of push but he's getting it he's not shutting down on you now did you notice it was actually kind of interesting he was very backwards in, in his thinking was to go back because his first step was a crossover which is correct that's what we want to see in the front his second step then was side to side and his third step he crossed behind so his mind was thinking go backwards just something to think about. Was I giving him a wrong signal? He's just, learning. It, he's just learning. And so ask him again. This time, when his front leg, this one, crosses over, release to him. Uh, and tell him he's good. Why did you make the hand up? That was a behind. And there. Now release and tell him he's great. Good. Good boy. But he's doing great not wanting to swing the hind out. Okay, go ahead and ask him again. Behind. Keep asking. There, now release and tell him he's great. So you got the hang of it, yeah? So then, yeah, practice. I would do this side maybe a couple more times and then go to the other side. But your main thing that you want to get through to him, since he's being really good about holding the hind, your main thing is going to be that you want the crossover. How are you doing? Uh, it was better when I was on that side. But now, can you think of why? Because uh, he was used to being on the other end better. Because when you were on this side, you bent him to the left, correct? Yeah. And when you were disengaging the hindquarters, he was better when he was bent to the left. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh -huh. So it doesn't really matter so much what side you're on or how his feet are moving, it's the bend. He's much tighter bending to the right, whether you're pushing him or bringing him his nose around to you, he's much tighter going to the right. So that's just something for you to keep in mind while you're working with him. So go ahead. Let, let me actually see your good side first, okay. and then we'll switch it back over. You, you know, you're really not using it for this. It can just go underneath because okay. you're probably just going to have his, your hand up on his nose or on the halter and just push his head away a little bit. So it doesn't really matter where the lead rope's clipped. And release and tell him he's great. Okay, now try the hard side. Good. Good. Now release and tell him he's great. And then you build on it. So for right now, two steps is awesome. Okay. Do two steps like ten different times. Then say, okay, now can you do three steps? Okay. Now he's doing really good about he's not trying to swing his hind out. 
So as long as you just don't allow him to develop that habit, it shouldn't be a problem for you. Okay. Okay? So your main thing is just going to be gradually building on how many steps he can do in the front. Okay. Good job. Okay. Yeah, that was a really good job correcting him, though. Good. And exactly, exactly what you did with your hands, pushing him backwards uh -huh. um, when he tries to creep forward, that's exactly what you want to do. Good boy. Good. <laughs> Good job. And so then you just build on it. And part of it, though, is going to be him getting more and more comfortable with not wanting to creep forward or backwards like he does. And so once he can get several steps where he's not trying to creep around, where he just understands to move the front, then you can go, okay, great. Now can you do three? Now can you do four? And you just build on it slowly. Yeah, but, that was but easy. That was really easy. Yeah, some horses are more predisposed to some. To him, he started trying to <laughs> do the forehead. <laughs> So. All right, I will see you next week. Okay. How are you doing? Good. This is probably going to be a better exercise for you to do with him because he's having to get out of your way yeah. instead of coming towards you. Okay, so when that lip comes, <laughs> elbow. Okay. Get, get used to that reaction right here. Boop, elbow, sorry. You ran into it. So see, what is he doing? There you go. And you're just defending yourself. You're not going after him. He's coming after you. Yeah. So you're just going to defend yourself and go, no, you're not going to push me around. I'm going to stand my ground and I'm going to defend myself. No, you can't come nibble on me. You may even want to put your hand here and have a stiff arm so that he just can't come any closer to you than that. Now keep your pressure on that front shoulder. Jip, what are you going to do? Push him away. I think it looks better when he was in the He still is kind of thinking about wanting to come back to you. So, I mean, ultimately you'll pick what you like best, but I would recommend really giving this a good try because then, he, you know, I'm going to stand here and he's not going to get any closer to me than this arm. And I'm just going to push him back away. If he thinks he's going to come over here, he's not. Does that make sense? Yes. And so he's going to have to kind of learn that boundary that when he wants to come nibble on you, it's like, mm, no, you're not. Good boy. There you go. Good boy. Did you try the other side yet? No, right there. Good. But be quick. Try to get try to put your elbow up when you see him coming. Try to get him before he gets you. And just make it it's not an aggressive thing. It just is a oh, you ran into me. Yeah. Good. Yeah, really good job on this one. And I think this will be a really good exercise for you to practice a lot to make him t move his head and move his shoulders yeah. away from you. Okay, well, you guys actually, surprisingly, for how long it took to get the good disengage, you guys picked up the turn on the haunches really well. Usually it's the opposite. Usually people can get a disengage, but then they have more trouble with the turn on the haunches, so. <laughs> okay. Now, what I'm going to go ahead for time's sake, because we do need to get to the obstacles, I'm going to demo for you. How you teach your horse to side pass. Um, you're not, I'm not going to have you guys do it this time, okay? I have videos of this. Watch the videos, practice it, call me if you have problems. But we do need to kind of get rolling. So I'm going to demo it, and then you guys will kind of be left to kind of build on it. Because the more you do the disengaging and the turn on the haunches, it'll be easier for you to teach your horse to side pass. Um, there's two ways, you know, you can side pass your horse to you or away from you. Does not matter what side you're on, should be able to do it from both sides. Today, 
I'm going to show you teaching your horse to slide pass away from you. Your horse needs this a lot. You're not, you could drill him on this for an hour. Okay, so you can move the hind, right? And you can move the front, yes? So now you just put it all together. Now you say, can you move the hind and the front together? So um, again, it depends on the cues you use. You might push the shoulder, you might hold the head. That's up to you. Um, I use a verbal cue, you don't have to. Um, but I like to because I like to specify to my horse what I'm doing. So like if I'm walking over here to brush my horse or something, I don't want to move it off of me. So I use a, a very, very clear body cue and a verbal cue. So when I go side away, side away, if she steps forward, I'll give her a little bump. Good girl. Okay, so how you teach that, obviously your horses aren't going to just side pass away when you move your arms. You're going to start with, a, okay, move the hind a step. Great, move the front a step. Great, move the hind a step. Great, move the front a step. Does that make sense? You, you can move them both now. So then you just switch back and forth really quick until you can get your horse moving sideways altogether. If you're having a lot of trouble of your horse going forward, then walk their nose up to about three feet with a rail in front of them, okay? Where if they start to get too far, there are rails there, okay? And they should, like I said, they should do it to both sides. Side away, away. Good girl. Does that make sense? Now, that's really nifty. If you've got a horse that's pushy, that's one of the first things. Like, if I had this dude come into training, that's one of the first things we're going to do. Because he really wants to step on top of you. And so you need to have that so ingrained into his head that as soon as you're like, uh-uh, he's like, oh, yep, sorry, side pass away. Okay? Um, and, you know, if you have a horse that's really, really respectful, you may not necessarily use it um, as much in a practical way, but it still is a good thing to have. Um, the better that your horse is at side passing on the ground, they're going to be better up in the saddle. Does that make sense? And then the side two, we're not going to do that today, but when we get to the side two, that's actually how we teach our horses to line up to the mounting block and stand still for us. So it's good to teach the side away first so that you have that, um, you can hold that space. Because you, the reason I don't generally teach the side two first is because if a horse is used to side passing towards me, you know, some horses, I mean, they'll get so into it that they're going to side pass right over top of you. Okay, so I like the side two first. So then when I go, or I mean, sorry, the side away first. So then when I ask him to side towards me, then I can go, okay, stop. That was too far. Now back up. Yes, good girl. Does that make sense? So we'll work on that. I think that's, um, I'm trying to remember what, what module that's in. I think that's next week or the week after. But um, if you can get your horses doing the side away, the side two will come very easily, okay? So work on that. Like I said, there's some videos. Um, the better that your horse is at the disengaging and the turn on the haunches, the better that they'll be at the side passing. Okay, what are we on to next? Oh, the backing up. Okay, this is your last thing before we go to our obstacles. There's at least two ways. Well, actually, there's three that I like to teach a horse to back up. One is going to be to back up with me. I'm not going to have you guys worry too much about that one today because we're going to work on that in the Liberty module. But that's a, I'm backing up, you should back up with me, right? The ways that you're going to work on today is backing up off of the halter. I don't care if you want to use your hand on top of their nose or you want to use the leader up under their chin. Whichever is most effective, I don't care what you use, okay? Um, for so a lot of horses, this does work better, though. I'm just going to warn you. So, is to be able to back away from pressure. The next is to then say, because when you have the pressure, then you're going with your horse, right? We're backing up together. Come on, over here. The next is to just back away from you, okay? So I'm going to stay standing here, and I want my horse to just back a couple steps away from me. This is one that you're definitely going to want to use your whips for, okay? So my cue is anytime, no matter what position I'm in on my, with my horse, my cue to back up is I stomp my feet. You can use a verbal cue. You can use something different. You can stomp your feet. That's up to you. And then when I want my horse to go away from me, I kind of do the flight attendant thing here. <laughs> so I'll say, first I'll get her attention over here. So I'll say back, I'll stomp my feet, and I'll ask with my hands. 
Good girl. And then see how I'm staying here? I'm not going after her. Now, in the beginning, there may be a little bit of having to go with them. Um, you can use the lead rope. You can use the whip. I usually recommend a combination of both because you're going to have to really see what's going to work better for your horse. So some horses you might say back and they don't go and then you go wiggle the rope and say, excuse me, I asked you for a back up. Other horses you'll say back and if they don't go, then you'll tap them on the chest with the, the whip. Okay. Um, whips to me, you know, different people have different preferences. I prefer the touch of the whip. Again, it, it's not, you know, you're not slapping them, but just tap them on the whip and get them moving. I always feel like that works much better, um, but you may prefer the rope. That's up to you. Whatever is most effective with your horse. Okay? So do both of them. Start with from the halter, either the top of the nose or the leader up underneath. And this is where your pressure and release really comes in. Okay? Because I'll ask for one step, a little release. One step, little release. Step. Okay? I'm not holding pressure. And I've got my hand still there, but it's a push, release. Push, release. Push, release for each step. Okay, and if you can work your horse like that, you could back up all the way around the arena because you're cueing every step. If you just hold the pressure and say, okay, back up, and you hold that pressure, your horse will probably give you about three steps and then they're going to die out. Okay, so work on that first, then go to the back away. Whatever body language or verbal cue you use with the pressure, use the same one when you ask your horse to back away. Does that make sense? Good. Then you'll be our superstar. <laughs> there you go. And then you hold release. You can even hold on to the halter so he doesn't tip his head away from you. Good. Okay, how are you doing? Okay, so right there where he's grabbing you, that, that, was, a, that was teeth. Before it was lips, that was teeth. If he's giving you teeth, then you can use the whip on him. Because first and foremost, you need to be able to defend yourself. I, I would even put my hand, because he's trying to take advantage of your how you have this open spot here, because your hand's under here, I would try grabbing up on top of the, the halter. Because then he just does. you can just kind of hold him and push him away from you. He doesn't have this vulnerable spot where he can try to grab your shoulder. Yeah, he's trying to bite you, though. Stand. Good boy. So, let me see. I would hold him here, and I've got a good hold on him. And if he thinks he's going to bite me, he's got another thing coming. But I'm going to hold that pressure, and then as soon as he takes a step backwards, then I release. If at any time he thinks that he's going to nip at me, good. Then I'm going to get him with the whip. Because this dude's big enough, he could throw you across the stall if you wanted to. And we're not willing to risk that, right? Good. And then I release. Ask again. Good. Now, that was a sideways. That wasn't a backwards. So I stay with him. And if he really shuts down on you, then tap him on the chest. Be like, dude, I'm talking to you. And then release. Okay, now you try. But see how when I hold him up here... At least if he really, because, you know, honestly, you know, he's a thousand pounds. Like if he wanted to take any, either of us out, he's going to do it. You know, I might be a little bit stronger than you, but probably not by that much compared to him. So if he really wants to take us out, he's going to do it. At least if you're here and you've got a stiff arm, if he sends all his might towards you, you're getting pushed out of the way. Does that make sense? So if his head comes ripping over to you, you're getting pushed out of the way. If you're here and his head comes ripping over to you, he's going to knock you out because he's going to hit you in the head. Or he's going to step over top of you and trample you. So if you're here, at least you can get pushed out of the way. Does that make sense? So it's a little bit safer when you're dealing with someone like him. So go ahead and just move him away from the fence a little bit. And then if he ignores you and doesn't want to back up, then you can use the whip on his chest. There, and then you release, tell him he's good, and ask again. Good. There you go. So keep working on that a couple of times, a couple more times, and then ask him to back away from you. Just like the side away is going to be crucial with him, 
the back away is also going to be crucial with him. Because you need to, at any point in time, if he starts crowding you, you need to go, ah, ah, get out of here, back up. And he should immediately back away from you. You're going to need that to be able to really stay safe and hold your space. Okay, how are you doing? Good. Good boy. Okay, so now can you ask him to back away from you just standing still I instead of know. using the halter? Should I use the whip? Oh, what I do when I'm training it is I'll use my cue, whatever. You'll decide what your cue is. Mm -hmm. but So my cue is, you know, I do the flight attendant arms and <laughs> stomp my feet. Um, if your horse doesn't go, which he probably won't because he doesn't know what the heck that means, mm -hmm. then you can either jiggle the rope or you can use the whip on the chest. I think the whip on the chest is more effective for most horses, but some horses do do better with the wiggle the rope. Okay. So play with it. I would use both back and forth and then figure out which one's best for you. Or sometimes you use both. Okay. Go for it. Back. 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 Little okay. more direct. I think he's maybe okay. being tickled a little. <laughs> back. And then wiggle the rope. There, and then tell him he's good. Good boy. And immediately now ask again. Okay. Little bit quicker with from the time that you give your initial back cue, um, be kind of quick. You can come in soft, is good. You don't want to come in too harsh, but you don't okay. want to wait too long either, because then he won't associate your first cue with what he actually did if it's too long later. Okay. So you'll come in a little bit soft, but then quickly progress up to effective. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. And then you tell him he's good. Good boy. Good well done. And then if you wanted to use treats for this, because he is not doesn't seem to be very pushy, okay. um, he would pick it up even faster. Okay. Hey, Nanny, do you have any treats? There's a whole bag of carrots right here ah. that you're more than welcome to. Okay. Keep. Yep. Keep going. So you've got the hang of it, it just is him learning it. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and, it, and it's not something that the majority of horses, it's not worth taking personally. Um, but it just is more so like, a, do I really have to? Yeah. You know, horses are actually, you know, they don't want to put any more effort into something than they have to. You know, <laughs> their, their thought process is, why would, I, you know, like, there may come a time later that I'll have to run away from a predator. So why would I want to use my energy now and not have it then when I need it? So they tend to kind of not want to put more effort into something than they really have to. So they will kind of test, me. Eh, nope. maybe no. I can get away with not really having to do it. And so then you might come in a little bit stronger and go, um, hello, excuse me, pay attention, you know. But overall, he seems very willing, you know. So let's go. What I'm going to do is separate you guys out just a little bit. I'm going to work on one person, and it really shouldn't take really very much of anything. I'm going to work with one person at a time to um, go through the gate. Probably most of you, since you got in here, know how to go through a gate with your horse. However, I'm sorry, did that startle you? Um, We'll just go through real quick some how to use your body control um, to do it very safely. Even if the horse that you're handling right now, you can go through a gate really, really safely and have no problem. There are other horses, and there's plenty of them in this world, that will full-on trample you. Um, and you go out and catch a new horse, you don't know. And so I am just want to go through with each of you a little bit of some safety protocol, how to use this to get your horse in and out of a gate without getting trampled. Um, while I'm doing that with one of you, the other two can work on some of the obstacles. So we've got a Z and we've got a maze. And what you're going to do is you're going to walk into it 
and then you're going to back through it. And you're going to use your body control maneuvers. It's mostly going to be moving the hind. Break it down. Right now, I don't, from this position, I'm not thinking about backing the Z. I'm going to think about backing a straight line to that corner. So I'm just going to back a couple steps, just back a straight line. Then I'm going to stop. And now I'm going to say, okay, now I need to move the hind. So I break it down one piece at a time. And this is kind of tight, so if you guys need to move it out, it's okay. It just is because of the size of the poles, it, it got a little tight. Good girl. Now I need to move the front over a little bit. Good girl. And then I back up a straight line again. She might have to move the hind over a step. Good girl. Good. And then I move the hind this way. Thank you. Little bit. There you go. Good. Oh, little too much. So now I'll come over here and move the hind back. That's okay, honey. So you just are going to play with it. And you can do it one piece at a time. You can do a little bit and then walk out. You don't have to back out of the whole thing. Does that make sense? So if your horse starts to get nervous at this point, you might go, okay, give me one more step backwards, and then I'll just go and walk you out, and we'll try again. You know, you, there's no reason to try to, you know, have a fight with your horse about it. So that's the Z. You can do it to both sides. It doesn't matter which way you start. The maze is kind of think about backing a U, okay? Again, do it on both sides. This one's not quite as tight. So you may want to start here and then go over to the Z. So you walk through, you back a straight line. Turn the haunches. Good girl. Back a couple steps straight. Move the hind. Good girl. Move the front. Good. And back up straight. So now you can really test these body control things that you've done. Now, if you guys can't get it perfect, it's fine because you just got introduced to this stuff today. You know, so it's okay. But you should be able to set these things up on your own when you're practicing. At least if you're doing them one at a time, then you don't need quite as many poles. Um, and practice. Do break it down. One small chunk at a time. Um, then your other one is going to be walking over these poles that are a little bit lifted. And the key is, um, if you could just step just a little bit over this way. Some horses are better following. Some horses are better sent. Ideally, you'd like to be able to send your horse because it's safer in most situations. If you can send your horse into a trailer, send them over an obstacle, it's much safer. So see how I'm out of the way? If she wants to jump over it or if she wants to run off or something, I'm out of the way. Some horses you'll have to lead right at the beginning. She doesn't really like stripes all that much, so she's kind of unsure. Good. And so I'll just keep her on one, just like how I talked about with the maze or with the um, Z, how you just do it one piece at a time. It's the same thing with the poles. You just send them over one at a time until they're comfortable with it, and then you can do go over all of them. So if you need to, you can use the whip to send. Good girl. And then that way she can't bring her head over to me now. So like with a horse like that that wants to step on you, you're definitely going to want to have the whip. She is not going to step on me, at least not on purpose. But with a horse like him that's going to step on you, you're going to want to really have that whip there. Good. So I'm standing here, and I have my whip here, and I'm going, oh, nope, sorry. Good. And then I'll do it to the other side as well. Now, with many horses, most of them, when they first start out, if you don't have a problem with this, it's because your horse is more mature. Um, so for some reason, horses just naturally have this thing where when something scares them, they want to jump on top of you. It's like a, you know, mommy hold me sort of thing. I don't know. 
but they want to jump up on top of you, okay, and step on you and throw the shoulder into you. And that's where people get really hurt because your horse is scared anyway, so they're not really thinking clearly, and then they come and jump on top of you. So we like to practice these things where we say, okay, that's fine that you don't like it, but you can't step on me. You can go around it, you can go around me, but you can't step on me. Does that make sense? So with everything, with the maze, with the Z, with the poles, make sure you do it all to both sides. So see how I have the whip here and I go, no, you can't come through here. Good girl. Now if I was leading through and she did a little jump, then she could step on me by accident. Um, so that's why I like to send. It's much safer and same thing like with a trailer. If you can send a horse into a trailer that you don't really know very well and hasn't trailered a lot, you're going to be safer than if you try to pull them in and then they, you know, jump in and jump on top of you. <laughs> okay, so who wants to go first with the gate and then the other two of you can kind of be working on these things. Okay. Okay, sure. So basically, and like I said, you know, a horse that has really good manners, you know, it is not quite as much of a big deal. But there's a lot of horses that you just don't simply know. And so, I'll wait for you to come over a little closer. So, gate protocol. First, the horse needs to be able to stand still for you to open the gate and not rush through it. If your horse rushes through a gate, that's how you get trampled. Okay? So you should be able to open this gate and your horse should wait. And then when you have it open to the point that you want, and you can use whatever you need to. So like if this is a new horse that's used to rushing the gate, you may have to kind of really get after them. Okay? So then you open the gate. And then you invite the horse to come through and you kind of send through. But see how I don't have her follow me through? Now, when you've got your old trusty and you're just walking around the ranch, I don't care. But I just wanted to go over this with you guys that you can do this. So like I said, when you're working with a young horse or a new horse or a pushy horse or a flighty horse or anything like that, that's how you want to do it. So then you send your horse through and then you should be able to shut the gate. Now, I've seen people with horses that they go to shut the gate and the horse tries to bolt through again. So if you've got it in your horse's head that they have to wait until they're invited, then you're a lot safer to shut the gate. The same thing, too, that's actually relevant to most of you guys, I think, because a lot of your horses are out in a pasture with other horses, right? So to be able to control your horse and keep the other horses away from the gate can be very tricky. So for you to be trying to move those horses off as you're coming in and then your horse tries to run through and then it's a big old mess, you know, it just doesn't work very well and it's not very safe. So if you can tell your horse, okay, I'm going to open this gate. And then you can tell your horse to wait while you're pushing these other horses back out of the way. And then when they're out of the way, then you can say, now come in, please and then your horse stays with you and doesn't bolt off with the herd, and then you can shut the gate. So see how what she does automatically, see how she keeps her head towards me and moves her hind away? She does it automatically because she's so used to being handled this way. Some horses, they'll just, phew, they'll just go straight, and when they hit the end of the rope, they'll stop. You don't want to shut the gate on your horse's butt here. You want that horse to turn around and be facing you while you're shutting the gate, okay? So that's our safety protocol. You guys can practice that and practice these things and I'll kind of go around and see how everybody's doing. like no you told me not to go through now I can't do it <laughs>
Now, if any of you ever have any thoughts of ever going to a show and doing like a trail in hand or showmanship or anything like that, these moves to practice and these little obstacles to practice are going to do wonders for you. Okay. All right, let's see it. So if he doesn't back, then you can have your whip here a little bit and go, oh, hey, back up. I was talking to you. Back. Back. Good. Good boy. Back. Good boy. Back. Good boy. Back. That's it. Good boy. Good. How would I make him turn while going back? So remember how you do the turn on the haunches? Or I'm sorry, yeah. you or disengage the hindquarters. Now I'm the one getting my terminology confused. So you disengage the hindquarters, so you'll come over to his left. His left. Left. There you go. And then you ask that hind to move over. Okay. And then you really get to test, okay, can I move that hind the two steps that I need, or is he just going to swing it out six steps and be out of the maze? Now try not to let him walk off. Oh. No. Okay, so just set him back up. Okay. It's really, when you're working on it in training, make it no big deal. If he steps out, just set him back up and try again. Okay. Good boy. But now next time you're prepared and go, okay, last time when I asked for the, the disengage, he stepped out with the front. So now I'm going to pay more attention to that front and not let him walk. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you kind of pay attention to what, because the horses, you know, they'll have tendencies of things that they'll do. And so you'll keep that in mind as you're working with them. Okay. So, so when I want to turn him, do I want to turn his head? You're going to, and when you're going this way, since his hind needs to go to the right, mm -hmm. you are going to tip his head towards you to the left. Okay. And move his hind over. Just like the disengaging. Make okay. sense? Yeah. Good. Good boy. Back. Hey. Good boy. Back. Back. Good boy. Okay. Back. Okay. Back. Back. Okay. Good That's boy. fine. Okay, so we're going to, um, you guys can continue practicing, and I'll still stay here for a little bit longer and make sure you guys all can kind of get through some of these obstacles, but they are going to go ahead and shut down the video. So we're going to go ahead and just close up with that and gather up the mics.